We're we're in the <laughs> all <laughs> right from the, top. from the top. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, welcome once again to the Sin Shop live stream. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and tonight with me, right here, we've got Law. I've been working. What's up? What's up? I've been I've been I've been I've been waiting for for uh, for Law to arrive for for a long long time. And, and we're just going to have a party. But before we have that party, there's a segue for you. Before we have that party, a quick announcement on the shop. Now, uh, this show is being done on behalf of the Sin Shop. We are a uh, maker of hackerspace located in Las Vegas, Nevada, that offers you the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, we're officially closed for renovation, but we do have some members who are valiantly holding the shop open for limited use. So, if you're in the Las Vegas area and you'd either like to help us get back in action or just stop by and check it out, out. Join our Discord and find out all that and more. Now, how do you do that, you may ask, as well you should. Uh, to join that Discord, hit up sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information. And to make sure you're notified of future events, including virtual ones just like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. And with that, so just to, by way of introduction, okay, let's see if I got this right. Podcaster, cinematographer, subscriber. Thank you so much for the sub. We appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> podcaster, cinematographer, photographer, writer, swim instructor. We'll get to that later. Yep. Live and more subs. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> live streamer and just in general, uh, all, all all around Renaissance man. So, but normally what I do is I'll ask people how they found out about the shop, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you know, you're this this is you've never been. As far as I'm aware, right? I've never been, no. All right. So how'd you find out about the show? That would be our mutual friend, Atlas, who is in here, like, causing a ruckus, I'm sure, with the rest of the spitballs. Um, yeah, he, from almost, like, the jump, was like, hey, like, you have a podcast. Like, Pong has a podcast. You guys got to connect. You guys got to connect. You guys got to connect. Mm -hmm. And I forgot, like how that all worked out like i reached out to you you reached out to me but it was like one of those things where it's like all right cool let's 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 give it a go let's give it a whirl right and it worked out we had like a like what it was like an hour and a half conversation <laughs> and it was just like okay we're definitely gonna do this yeah absolutely uh let's see checking in as part of uh, lawrence's fan club aka the law <laughs> enforcement <laughs> what's up what's up dave oh oh That's oh oh dave oh. the wave before i get too far away from the beginning Okay. I have an announcement because I have a guest coming up. Not today. I should have made this as part of the intro. You know what? I'm going to save it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a little teasy tease. Ooh. Ooh. In, I'm here for it. It's secret time. In three weeks, it's robot fighting time. Who is, who is it? Who's it going to be? Wait and find out. I will tell you at the top of the hour. Mm-hmm. Three, it, everyone, it not, everyone loves a good robot fight. Come on. Oh man. Oh man. And they're, and they're good ones too. It ain't no, it ain't no slouch. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. So anyway, back to the, back to the thing. Okay. So, so aside from our buddy Atlas now, and, and, and he was right. He told me that, that, uh, you know, you, you, you two are going to hit it off and we absolutely did like, like we were talking about before. So, okay. So tell us a little bit about house by law. What's, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the elevator pitch? Essentially, my mentor, Hutch, who is the CEO and founder of uh, Imbion, was like, all right, you now need a platform for yourself. Like, you need to start your own company, that whole shebang. Like, what do you want to do with yourself? And at the time, like, I just picked up a camera for, like, really the first few years. Um, and I love photography. I love, I like telling stories. I've always been, you know, my mom told me when I was younger, one day you're going to be a storyteller. And I just kept circling around the idea of like the art of storytelling in some way or form. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, but that seems like a mouthful. It just, I need something like short and like digestible. Yeah. So then it finally became like Taos and Taos is like uh, the way and, and you know, your path and whatnot. Mm -hmm. what I say it's at the end of my episodes. Um, and it kind of just like snowballed from there where it was like, oh, the art of storytelling. I can tell stories through video. I can tell stories through the podcast. I can tell stories through my writing and photography and just kind of tell stories, enjoy stories as they come and embrace stories uh, for what they are. So that was kind of what you, what, what, 
kind of what started you on the path to producing the podcast in the first place. You wanted to yeah. tell tell the stories that hadn't been told, essentially. Yeah. So I the elevator pitch for the podcast in general. So like the podcast started off as like you know the art of storytelling, and there was like different little mini series within it. Mm-hmm. But the the one that Atlas was on is called "What's Your Story," and I um, the elevator pitch for that is like my story is only as good as the people who help shape it. So uh, I've only known Atlas for you know less than a year now, but he's oh, wow. definitely been a really big part of my like last you know few months and year. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I gotta have him on, especially for like season one, uh, season three, episode one and two guests. Like you know that would be a great episode to have. Um, so I've had like my mom, I've had um, my my brother and uh, his wife. I've had like a bunch of people on where I've had the nerds around, like my other two co-hosts, uh, Tone and Sebas, mm-hmm. on. And it's it's one of those things where like I want to have that like archive for like future generations to listen to like our kids or you know whoever, and just have those stories that you know we either don't really think about because I feel like a lot of stories, especially as we get older, get lost. Um, I know like I'm Puerto Rican, so we have a lot of stories that are told by way of mouth, and mm-hmm. we're just like, oh man, like how did that story go again? Or like, what was the detail that like always gets mixed up kind of thing yeah. where I can have, you know, a conversation with my aunt, like I did. And that's forever. Like just there archived, you know? Interesting. So not just, uh, re not just telling the stories that don't get told. You're also, you, you kind of see your show as like a way of archiving for the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I have like the uh, what's your story uh, yeah. as like the main focus series uh, really briefly. I, I want to bring it back because I think it was a dope idea. We have the story so far, which was uh, my buddy Demetrius, my best friend uh, and uh, Tommy, who is uh, our editor and DM for the podcast and everything that we do. Brother, my brother, my brother beard, as we call him. Um, but he uh he's uh he was he's also been on but they were my co-hosts for this series called um the story so far where we basically talked about like you know stories from our childhood stories that influence us stories you know the what's the hero's journey and like kind of just breaking down stories in like different versions and different to- topics and contexts so one another thing that 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 also interested me in addition to you know like you know the telling other people's stories end of things was that in a lot of ways you it seemed like you kind of followed a similar path to the to what we did which was okay first of all who do we have in our immediate vicinity because the shop has stories to tell has tons of stories to tell and from all walks of life we've had people on talking about cooking that was actually one of our biggest shows by the way but uh, we've had people coming on to talk about cooking. We've had people come on and talk about 3D printing several times. Uh, NFTs, selling art. You know, we've done, I think, two shows on that. Uh, you know, construction, uh, manufacturing, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, and and it's, it's spread out from there. A lot of people don't realize, my point with this is, a lot of people don't realize that podcasting or, or streaming or whatever is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not going to turn on Twitch and in three weeks be PewDiePie. But like, you know, you're not going to be the most popular person on any of those platforms. Uh, So is that has that been your experience as well? Do you have very, very, very slow growth? It's funny because like I've been on multiple podcasts. So uh, Mm -hmm. I my relationship with podcasts has always been a little weird, like or in the early days, I remember my cousin tried to get me on to, like, to listen to his podcast, but then like I wasn't really big into wrestling, and that was a mainly uh, wrestling-focused show at the time. Mm. Um, and then it was kind of figuring out, oh, like podcasting is like beer. Like As long as you have like that flavor palette for it, you can find your way into something. So I started listening to certain things um, way after, but I started, the po- I started on a podcast called We the Geek that eventually be called... Uh, Geek Ronin with uh, Tommy, Danny, and Guy. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think midway through that transition, Tales by Law started coming out, um, and then or the Art of Storytelling started coming out, and then Nerds in like the later part, I, I became a co-host on that. Um, I think with Tales by Law, though, I I wanted to do it. Like I always knew, like all right. I've done multiple podcasts. I've been a co-host and I've done a bunch of things. I feel like I can do it. Like just me as the single host or just a person talking. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I didn't have like a end all be all big goal. It was one of those things where I was like, if I get a couple people to listen, cool. Yeah. If I don't, I don't. Um, for me, like the personal, like big moments were like hitting like 1500 plays, like was mm-hmm. like huge for me. And I only have less than 30 episodes, I think at this point, yeah. which is kind of like jarring for me. Um, and then also like meeting someone who was listening to my podcast who I've never met before yeah. was huge. And I actually had uh, her and her husband on my podcast. Uh, season two episode three of what's your story i think leia and um uh, marquise are on that episode are those two episodes Mm -hmm. so it's like those moments of like growth is going to happen things are going to happen in this space but you can't force growth yeah for some like totally I I, i don't i don't like the idea of forcing the growth um in certain certain respects, I like I think with like nerds, we can push and grow, and like we have, like yeah. we easily blown up in this last year with nerds to a place that I don't think the three of us like fully like grasp. Like we're like, oh snap, we hit a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Oh snap, we have people contacting us to be on our show. Like that was mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. Um. So like that growth, we can see and we can try to like like just keep continuing that growth instead of like pushing that growth. Right. Um, for me, it's, it's less of that and more of just like, I just want to tell stories. And if you're down to listen, like yeah. I'm down for it. Right. Yeah. Sir Frosty in the chat said, uh, uh, yeah, man, we hit a hundred and we're still going. I, I feel like, like, like Frosty's onto a, onto, onto something there because that's a big part of it is consistency. If you yeah. show up every week, you will eventually get people to start watching and they'll to tell, tell two friends, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, uh, the three nerd of tears are taking over the airways. There they are. <laughs> but, which, you know, is, which is wild considering that uh, there's huge gaps in my own podcast. Like, so the art of storytelling would have like one episode drop, two weeks gap, a couple mm-hmm. episodes drop. So there's sporadic moments, but I'm glad that I've hit this niche of podcast airways that people it seems to enjoy like i nice. usually have a, a space where i can not pl- p- upload something like the upload before atlas was the actually the nerds that they were my season finale of season two yeah. in november and i dropped it in november mm-hmm. and haven't had anything until atlas and even then i was still getting like a couple plays here and there but i don't look at like oh man i only got one play this week it's like oh snap people are still listening to me like so it sounds to me like you're not even necessarily running a marathon at all. You're just you 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 just keep showing up because it's a thing that you want to do. You're right. like you just want like like we were talking about before. You want to tell the stories. That's the marathon. I think the marathon comes more from like I guess a business standpoint. Like I I understand that as a company, like yeah. for me to get my name out there, I have to be consistently doing something. So if yes. I'm not podcasting, I'm streaming. If I'm not streaming, right. I'm doing something on YouTube. If I'm not yep. doing something on YouTube, I'm doing more photography. I'm always trying to still be active even if i don't post a lot right i'm still keeping like a lot of the skills sharp and i'm always ready to do something um because i know that i'm i'm trying to grow like a production company essentially i want to put out stories and tell stories in multimedia uh facet so like i have to be able to uh keep growing and sharpening my craft if i will well and that's really it isn't it like because you can (sighs) I can't remember. There was a there was a tape that I listened to a long time ago. I used to be like really into like like sales training and all this stuff because at the time okay. I was a telemarketer. It was the it was the nineties. Let's just do it. We'll just we'll just move forward. Oh, okay. I'm an old, but uh, but the uh, I'm an old. So I I am an old. It's okay. But no, but the uh, uh, but but there was one tape that was like uh, something to the effect of persistence is continuing to show up and do the work after the initial glow from starting a thing has faded. It seems like you've dodged that. And I and I guess maybe what it is is the fact that you don't look like look at it as a business. It's a thing you like to do. Like I know I, I guess I know that it is a business and I've always had like this weird relationship with business. Like even when I was like working in customer service and like working retail, like I hated feeling like a salesperson. So mm-hmm. I I think I did well in sales because I was the anti salesperson. Like I would, I would, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just like, Hey, here's the store. What do you need? Like, I'm trying mm-hmm. to talk to you, the customer or the audience, like just a person, like, what do you need? Right. What do you want? Like, what yeah. can I provide you? Even if I can't provide you with it 
with me, I would, I'm always open to like pointing you in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Frosty. Yeah, exactly. It's about relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 and that is the thing that I think a lot of people missed is, is learning how to make those, uh, those relationships, you know, instantly with someone that, that, that is the trick. But I am, I'm like super grateful for not only like the teams that I've worked with and like the, the group uh, that we all like have, but yeah. like nerds is one of those places now where in this like indie comic creator, um, like kind of field and, and like, uh, like feel mm-hmm. it's been like, we just keep meeting people and like, they're so willing to help and like, Hey, you want to be on our show? All right. You're going to be on our show. I'll be on your show. And like, we'll connect yeah. you to this person. Oh, you were on get, you were a guest on this show. Yeah. Right. Go to their show too. And it's just been like this ever growing, like, like, uh, Atlas says it all the time, you know, a uh, uh, rising tide, you know, raises all ships. Like, absolutely. It's that kind of mentality that I, I'm, hundred percent here for it compare like i listened to your first show and i like and i listened to your most recent show and even in just your ad reads like i can tell that you've done it enough times to where you're like okay i know what i'm doing now you know what i mean like it took you, it took a second yeah to find yeah. that to find that beat i think with everything uh i've been doing with the certain shows like finding that comfort level of like a little bit of confidence but like just yeah. like trusting myself in my own skills right but. yeah i think that that's what it, that, that that's what comes through with you is a uh uh like you're you've you've reached your your a, a comfortable point but i don't want to say comfortable in a like okay now i can rest on my laurels kind of way mm-hmm. i mean like mm-hmm. a comfortable point like okay no i know what i'm doing now you know what i mean yeah 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 it, it it's it, staggering it, feel, how, it, feel, oh. it feels like muscle memory now right yeah, exactly. Yeah. You were mentioning the uh, well, uh, the nerds of the round earlier. And and before the show, we were talking a little bit about mentors. Uh, mm-hmm. How did you go about that process of of a finding one and and B like, how did how does that relationship work? Like, because I've always been on my own, honestly. It was it wasn't so much that I found or I sought out mentors. Uh, right. I was th- I was lucky enough that uh, they ended up like choosing me kind of thing. Nice. Uh, so my first mentor, Rich, uh, I was working at Fossil, and he was one of like the first managers I met, like kind of thing. And we're op- helping open up the store, um, getting the 34th Street store ready. And he looks at me, and my best friend at the time uh, had got me the job. So he goes, "Oh, you're Jason's best friend. Mm-hmm. I'm Rich. Don't worry. I'll take you under my wing." Don't want, you don't have to ever worry about anything else. And from like that point, he taught me like, you know, sales. He taught me like cash wrap, you know, you know, how to do my watches. I can take apart a watch and put it back together. Like, you know, no problem now. So, um, but a lot of that early point was, it was, it was around the time where I first moved out of my house for the first time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, you should do it. You're 20, you're like 21 now. Go move out, do your thing. The sign third. So there's a lot of, that early 20s growth that happened because mm-hmm. I had him to kind of give me that like we have very parallel similar lives and like uh, he has the hindsight to be like you're it, you're going the right way you or he'll be like I miss happy law and I'm like why am I not happy he's like because you haven't eaten yet <laughs> like if I was if I was tired if I was like if I was it, like he knew like it, uh, that's a lot of things uh, that I appreciate about him too was he kind of could read my energy really well so he yeah. knew like if I was having an off day he'd be like all right you're gonna go to the stock room today and work there or you're gonna go just do watches today right. and people would be like why are you so like he's like listen you want Lawrence at peak then you're gonna get him at peak at this and right. It just happened to work out. Um, yeah. He's been one of my best friends, like a big brother mentor for years now. He's going on like, I've known him since I was 21, so like 12 years now. Um, and then Hutch was one of those things that like kind of just fell. Like I, I started going to cons uh, in like 2014. I was in like this spot of like, I just need to get out the house. And you know, uh, Dave over here and a couple of my other friends were like, dude, come to cons, have a good time. You, you're, you're down, we don't like seeing you down, come to cons. Mm-hmm. And by the time I hit New York Comic Con that year, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I don't know what this life is, but I wanna do this for the rest of my life if I can. Uh. And I kind of just stood over like the Jacob Javits, like the, one of the big staircases, and I'm just looking at a crowd of people and I just put it out there to the universe. 
lo and behold, I met Hutch uh, because my buddy, uh, who's his now girlfriend, um, they they were going on the first Valentine's Day together. So he was mm-hmm. like, you, he was like, you go to con, I got a date, and I'm like but we always go to cons together. What, are you just leaving me? You're abandoning me for some girl that you just met? Oh, <laughs> uh, literally, I always try to give him shit about, but I would have like met him without it. Um, and I met Hutch, um, yeah. talked about like the brief moment uh, where I had some of the art from the studio already. And I was like, oh man, I recognize some of this. And we got to talking and like really quickly, he was like, oh, I want to work with you. Like, I don't know, I don't know what in what capacity I want to work with you, but let's talk. And we exchanged mm-hmm. some stuff. And then after a second conversation um, that got like, a, I want to say like a six hour conversation we had, um, yeah. he was like, what what platform are you comfortable with? And I was like, Instagram. And I ran the uh, Imbian Con Instagram for like that first year. And I, I was like, I guess an intern, but like a little higher up than an intern. And then within a few months, I was from like the a little higher up than intern to one of the leadership teams. So our um, Tommy, who we mentioned, me and him kind of came up in the leadership ranks together. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just took me under his wing. Like I learned so much about business and life and just so much like I wouldn't trade a four year like education for what I learned outside. Yeah. Like, I, I'm yeah. three colleges up, three colleges dropped out and still feel like I learned more outside of college than I did inside of it. Yeah. No, I, I definitely hear that. Like I didn't, I, I ended up not going because you, there's a, there's a story behind that, but this is, this is your, yeah. this is your show. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that one another time, but um, I'll, have to, I'll have to get you on the nerds to tell that short story. Oh yeah. No DJ and kicked off. That's what happened. But I'll, I'll tell you all about that. Okay. okay. Uh, oh yeah. But, uh, it's, but it, it's weird. Like that's been my experience as well because and I'm and, I, and I'm not trying to tell anybody who's in college to drop out, and I'm not trying to tell anybody to not go to college if they feel that that is right for them. But do what do what's right for you. You you said it perfectly. Do what's right for you. That's what I'm saying exactly. And you know, speaking of doing what's right for you, I have to do what's right for the show right now. And what that <laughs> is is I got to tell you guys again what we're doing here. So we are talking right now uh, with Law. That's our guest tonight. And we're talking all about storytelling. And uh, this is all done be- on behalf of The Sin Shop. Uh, we're a maker hacker space in Las Vegas, Nevada. It has the tools and equipment so that you can make anything your little heart desires. Making the stories. Wow. Hey, it's thematic. Absolutely. Uh, so at, at any rate, so temporarily we're closed. We're in the middle of, uh, of renovating the shop. But we do have some members who are holding the shop open, probably even right now. Uh, for limited use. So if you're in the Las Vegas area and you'd like to help us get back in action or just stop by and check it out, join our Discord at sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information on the shop. And I promised you something and I will now deliver in three weeks. So there's today, not next week, the week after that. We're going to have on the entire team from jackpot yo it's yo, gonna be awesome. awesome if you haven't seen the latest season of BattleBots, it's on discovery plus uh it is it is awesome and jackpot our our, our las vegas hometown heroes they <laughs> they 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 hurt people <laughs> not really they just robots that but that the- <laughs> looks like a machine and a half mm. oh mm. man that's a scary they little t- beast they took out Donald Hudson. And if you know like anything at all, like from Lockjaw, yeah, mm-hmm. if you know anything at all about BattleBots, you know who that is. <laughs> like right. you you know who Donald Hudson is. So yeah, no, it's 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 unbelievable. And we are so it's gonna be so awesome. Cannot wait. It's long overdue too, for that matter. Okay, anyway. Oh, also <laughs> If you're watching us on YouTube, I got bad news for you because you are getting just a little tiny piecey piece of the show. If you want to catch the whole show when we record it and see all the times that I really screw up a live read, uh, just uh, <laughs> head on over to twitch.tv forward slash sin shop every Friday night for the main show. 
And on Monday nights, we have our project stream, which is where we all get together. We work on projects and you know, you can, oh, and you can use the channel points that you're getting right now down in the, down in the chat down there. Uh, you can uh, use those channel points to change the channel uh, to see, to watch different people's projects. It's kind of cool. We got four people running simultaneously. Awesome. You can be like, yeah, you can be like, well, what Pongs are doing is boring. I want to see what, what Titans is doing or what M Elemental is doing. You know, you can, you can flip between the channels like that. So yeah. Okay. So uh, join for us it. for that. Absolutely. Yeah. So join us for that. Oh, and also if you are watching us on YouTube and you like what you see, of course, thumbs up, subscribe bells, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> if you don't like what you see, Leave us a comment and tell us why, because we read all those comments. And if you got an idea to make the show better or make it something that you like, let us know. And we will, uh, we'll be happy to get that on the show for you. All right. Oh, after the show for the Twitch people, last thing, I promise. After the show for the Twitch people, we're going to have another full hour for the post game. So this part here, we've kind of got planned out. No holds barred in the second in the second hour. So, so join us for that. Good times. All right. Let's get back to it. So the, the biggest thing that, that, uh, that I keep hearing that, that keeps coming throughout, um, throughout everything is like with the exception of the first couple episodes of Taos by Law, right? Mm. The largest part of what you do is tell other people's stories, right? Like your podcast is, is telling people's stories. Your photography is telling other people's stories. What was it that, that drew it, drew you to that format? I mean, I know you said about the, uh, about being a, uh, uh, you know, kind of a librarian of other people's stories, but that format specifically, like uh, telling someone's life story rather than talking about a specific, uh, a specific topic, like asking a, a guy who's into 3d printers, why, you know, tell me about your family life rather than 3d printers. Right, because I feel like yeah. the story, like you can you can talk to someone about like, hey, like, tell me everything you do and what got you into three D printing. But if you tell their life story, it kind of like shapes everything leading up to the point that that tipping point of for them, where it was like, and then three D printing happened, and it was just you know skies up from there, you know. And I love seeing that because there's so much more into a lot of stories that we get in interviews where it's like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm this guy who started doing this. And it's like, no, like, I want to know, like, give me the, give me the full scoop. Like, like, let's just sit down, have a conversation. And, you know, like whenever we feel like the conversation is done, it's done. Like I've had, I think two plus hours or more. I think I haven't hit the three hour mark yet, but I'm mm -hmm. getting, dangerously close to hitting like a three hour recording session with people because I'm just here for the story. Like if you have a, a wonderful story to tell it or for, and there's people that I've interviewed who don't feel like they have a great story. And I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like you, I can, I'll, I, if you come on the show, I'll pull that story out of you. I promise you. Cause I, I oh, think wow. that, I think that like a lot of people, it's that like sense of like n not seeing yourself as the hero of your own story. You see yourself as like a side character and for a oh. lot of people, it's like, you know, for at least for me, I'm like, no, you are the main character in your story. And you even, you know, how big or small scale affect so many people that you don't even realize you do. And if your story hits someone like I love having a, especially a mix of stories where like their story can touch whoever. So I just record it upload it put it out there into the universe yeah. and then lo and behold someone can be like oh man like this part really resonated with like um with atlas someone someone uh got back to him about you know oh man I, you know me in school and the science thing he was telling me like I, this really resonated I'm like that's awesome that's what i want i want people to kind of find that community and find that sense of like commonality with each other through storytelling yeah. because you know everyone can share stories and feel like despite how they were raised or where they were raised, there's always a thread. You just got to find it, but there's a thread that connects everyone. You set my brain back on its heels there with that, with that people feel like they're a side character in their own, instead of the main character in their own story. That's, that's cause, cause I had always known, like, cause you can see that in people sometimes. I never knew what it was because it's just yeah. like, it's like they're an NPC waiting for you to come up and talk to them. Yeah. And, and trust me, it's not, I'm not saying that I don't experience that myself. There's a lot of times where, yeah, right. uh, you know, I have to 
own up to like being the guy or like being uh i i'm more ready to like let someone live out their dream and like i'll get you to your dreams that when Mm -hmm. someone asks me like hey like how do we get you to yours i'm just like me like me i don't i don't i don't (laughs) know i don't know how to think about me yeah well in in some ways don't you already have it because you know, you are in the in a position where you can you can help people get to their dreams, right? right. And you know uh, uh, this is another thing that I learned from from my days in in telemarketing. This guy, he, he, for for whatever reason, that industry attracted a lot of people who were going to sit you down, son, and let me tell you the secrets of life or whatever, you know that kind of crap. But but one of those was, I'll tell you what, he gets, he gets real serious. Tell you what, if you help. A thousand people get what they want, you'll have what you want. And I was like, huh. I mean, <laughs> and I don't know how true that is, but I think it sets you up for a mindset of of helping others in right. a way to where you'll be but like, oh, yeah, okay, no. I think I, the more realistic approach is you don't need to help a thousand people. If you help one person, truly like help one person, yeah. that's like the that's like the pebble like effect. Right. Pebble right, pebble right. water effect. So like as a teacher, like as a swim teacher, I always feel like really grateful that I've worked with a lot of kids throughout the years, even you know, doing after school and all the other things that I've you know done over the years, when like I know that I taught a kid. And then, like later on, like those parents or those or those same kids, like one of my kids became yeah. a swim uh, uh, a lifeguard himself and did all he's on yeah. the swim team. And I was just like, that's awesome! Like you mm-hmm. know, it was always such a trip when I would I, I would I, I would help people you know learn to DJ, like help them get to where they wanted to go, mm-hmm. you know, and all that stuff in, in the in the in the in the DJ world, and. Uh, and, and it was always really cool when I would see them get to the point where they had someone under their wing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that, that proud parent sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, exper- I'm experiencing that now. Actually, one of my one of my things for last year with Hutch was he was like, find yourself someone to mentor. It's about yeah. time. And I'm like, right. What? Like. He he always does this thing where he he knows what, I, what like I'm ready or I, he'll tell me like yeah you can do this and I'm like what are you talking about and then later on he's like an anime he's like an anime like teacher like any yeah. anime pick him out and they'll give you like that one wisdom of knowledge and the, the protagonist is like what like what are you talking about old man like you're crazy this is that third episodes later it'll click and it'll be like oh that's hot mm-hmm. um so like i now like have a, someone i'm mentoring and yeah kakashi yeah it's like that the swim coach thing you know we'll, we, we'll come back to in the post game because i got <laughs> we were telling some swimming stories absolutely, earlier and- absolutely i'm i'm excited for that story <laughs> I'm, so, can- I'm so here for it Oh, just just wait. If you like to watch a if you like to watch a worm regal on its hook just wait for the post game because <laughs> Because I'm that guy. I promise. So, uh, like, I, so like, from what little you told me, I've still seen worse. I've still seen worse. I, I'm gonna tell you a story. Well, I'm not. That's gonna I'm not telling that one story. I'm not telling no, the coral I, reef story. I, that's I, not. I will tell you. I will tell you a story of what I've seen. Okay. All right. And it will blow your mind. All right. All right. Sounds good. But, but in addition to all that, like, so you got all this stuff going on. Like, we had to plan this out a, a whole month in advance. Yeah, I, and you showed me like a, a a picture of your calendar, and it's just book solid for months. And you're like, yeah, yeah the first time I can get you is a month and a half from now, or something like that. And I was so, like, I think it was a month. What? So in in my in my Instagram or in a lot of my social like uh, yeah. like descriptions, it says busy is an understatement, and I 100 percent like I, I apologize in advance for it. No, no. I, 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 I somehow know how to turn every little thing that I do into a project and I have to learn how mm. to just do things for the sake of doing things for my own self enjoyment. So like really like, and then I, I'll like somehow I was like, yeah, Twitch stream on Mondays and, 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 and Thursdays because they're my only two days off. So why, why have a day off? Why don't I just tack those on and oh, Twitch no. stream on those days? So like, oh. and I've always, I've always been this way where like I'm the, I work way too hard. I don't know how to give myself a break, but like 
they're short. By by comparison, I'm doing maybe mm-hmm. a couple hours of stream, a couple hours of um, a couple hours of stream, a couple hours of recording this and third. Oh, that's true. But yeah. Some of the energy and prep work for it takes a lot. So like I mm-hmm. can go through the whole day of just like working on notes, doing things in the background. By the yeah. time I get to that, I'm doing a lot of you know high energy you know podcasting, streaming, what have you. By the time I'm done for the day, I'm cooked, and I'd like yeah. just start hitting burnout so fast. Right, right. Oh, I can believe it. Uh, I, I, before I before I move on, we got to put a pin in that. Uh, but I wanted to read this comment because it was so good. Telemarketing got me com- uh, got me comfortable with with people saying no to me. Comfortable not with the emotional standpoint, but with the will to push on and endure each journey to its fullest capacity. Customer service should be taught in school. It would change the way people operate in daily life. Amen. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that is what it is, isn't it? It's, and, and I used to actually, I used to train people doing telemarketing on exactly this. Mm-hmm. You have to go through the nose to get to the yes. Yeah. You yeah. can call a hundred people and 99 of them are going to tell you no. One of them is probably going to tell you yes. You know, you just have to make sure that you it, keep hammering same, at it. Same. It's the same like uh, with success and failure. Like you have to get comfortable with mm-hmm. failing, and the idea of yep. like failing is just a, a lesson that you have to learn. Absolutely. That's all it is. Learn, yep. learn, learn from the things that happen because yeah. you can do. Uh, and that's the, one of the hardest lessons I had to learn was you can do everything right and still not win. Yeah, and I was like, what? It's like absolutely. Listen, it's it's maybe maybe you're doing everything right, but you're speaking in a language that the other person cannot like understand. So now you have to go. Do I change my language or do I change my audience? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a big like, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, trial and error. And I'm 100 percent like school of trial and error. I'm willing to try absolutely. things at least once, see if they yeah. work. And then if they do work, cool. If they don't work but I liked it. I, there was something like there pull from it. So you see what I can, you know, keep on tack on for later. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Dan, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Danielle says, yes, yes, yes. You can certainly tell when someone hasn't worked customer service. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to guess, is it, is it Chella or Zella? Zell. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Zell says, uh, took the words out of my mouth, Danielle. LOL. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, well, not only that, not only as far as like uh, the level of confidence they have, but if, if I go to, uh, to, you know, one in the before time, at least when you go somewhere with someone to go and eat and they don't tip and they leave a mess on the table, it's like, oh, you, you don't work. You, you never yeah. work. Yeah. You know, you, I, have, okay. I, I have this weird thing where like I'll put plates together and I'll start and people are like, no, nah, yeah. that's fine. And I'm like, mm, I can't. Mm. I just... It's not though. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've been on the other side of that. I, yeah. I, I, I think I've worked catering a few years, like with my aunt and uncle. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've done like, uh, one like official, like coffee shop kind of, kind of gig, but that yeah. was enough for me to like, a hundred percent just be like because i know like i have family in, in you know that kind of industry and it's just yeah no not okay yeah yeah it's yeah, yeah bulletproof the yeah bulletproof term, man yeah just called de- decent human courtesy exactly that's that that is it ultimately it's like do you know to me that that answers the question does this person care about someone are you willing to fight for someone you don't know Mm, that's yeah. that's you know there was there was a certain guy sometime in the uh, early last year that uh, that was talking about that and uh, this is not a politics show so i'm not gonna go into that uh, once you've been on the other side and you've had that person leave a wreck or yell at you you swear to yourself in that moment to never become that person absolutely yep. uh you're right turn shouldn't need to be taught but it helps some people to see it in person yeah yeah that's true a lot of times when people come here i've noticed that they get caught up in it like like oh wow you know oh the lights are so cool and this is so neat and blah 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 you know and and you know i'm gonna go down to the strip and blah 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 and i always say and maybe i shouldn't i don't know but i always tell them that just remember vegas was not built by people winning money all those lights yeah 
all those lights you see, all the all the all the the, the big buildings and all that. Yeah, yeah, they didn't build that by giving money away. So right. you know, just just keep that in mind. But do you, do you feel like that that there's a corollary to that in in New York? Where it's like designed to like kind of keep you there, kind of thing, I guess. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, visitors, for paying our taxes. That is, that is, that yeah, is true. a little bit. I mean, like, like where know. where if you don't if you don't stay, like, I guess the equivalent would be if you don't stay grinding, if you don't stay like I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. You know, like rent is so damn expensive there that it eats right. you alive. So, you know? so it's this thing where like uh, people are like, I wish I can make my New York salary in a place where my new york dollar was stretched so like if mm. i made new york bucks but i lived in georgia i can own a mansion kind of thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. um that's true and you know like new york like we say oh if you can make it here you can make it anywhere that is a hundred percent true a hundred percent true and i would never deny that like mm -hmm. if you grew up here you have it's yes you have some level of chip on your shoulder but it's more so like because you're so engrossed in this, like, gotta grind, gotta do this, gotta do that. You know, by the time you get somewhere else where they're not used to that attitude, it's like a complete 180. And they're just like, wow, you're really productive. Why yeah. don't you turn that down? Like, you have to turn that down. <laughs> and everyone's just like, oh, okay, like, it's not that serious. And you're just <laughs> like, oh, maybe, maybe I don't have to constantly be at 100 and you start to yeah. learn how to find that new like even place for you well speaking of a place for you <laughs> right now uh right now pace yourself are you trying to put us all out of a job yeah exactly right. uh, so so speaking of a place for us uh we are at the place where we end the first hour so uh we're gonna take a quick break i'm gonna grab another beverage and uh and we'll uh, we'll, we'll come back come right back here in about i don't know probably three five minutes something like that uh, and then we got a whole nother hour, completely unscripted. Uh, I may, I may tell the swimming story. I don't know if I'm gonna tell the whole swimming story because I, I have... listen. If you give me the okay, I will run with it and I will try to squeeze it out of you. <laughs> we can. Mm, I don't know, man, because I did break a federal law. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, mean, I don't know if I want to admit that on 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 stream. I don't know. Is it? Is it? I mean. Maybe. I feel like we Probably. all have in some way. Haven't we all broken federal laws? We've Maybe. Been once. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never even been to Nashville. I have no idea what you're talking about, officer. No, but I, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, said, did, did Atlas just say stick around for post game? They could swear? <laughs> well, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's right. So, so okay, all right, all right, all right. We, we, well, we're never gonna find out unless we go there. So again, this uh, this show is brought to you on behalf of the Sin Shop, a uh, maker hackerspace located in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, with tools and equipment and uh, and and people and 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 things and stuff to help you make anything that your little heart desires. Now, uh, you might want to you might say to yourself, "Well, hey, I'm in the Las Vegas area. I want to go check it out." Wrong, sort of. Uh, if you are in the Vegas area and you want to go <laughs> check it out, yeah, we're in, we are officially closed for renovation, but we have some members who are holding the shop open for limited use. So if you're in the Vegas area and you'd like to help us get back in action, uh, it is indeed a real place. That's true. Uh, if you'd like to see it for yourself, join our Discord at sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information on the shop and to find out when the shop will be open. Law, it's been an absolute giggle. And I look forward to another hour of it, dude. I'm I'm still here for it. Thank you for having awesome. me. Awesome. Oh, been before a lot of fun. before we get rid of all the YouTube people, tell tell us where where uh, people can find your stuff. Oh, so many of things that you can find me at. Uh, you can find me at uh, Taos by Law. So at T A O S by Law, uh, anywhere on social media. Um, you can find the Art of Storytelling podcast uh, anywhere you listen to your podcast. Uh, podcast, your podcast. Uh, you know. Needs. I got one of those up there too. Uh, the compiled social, I can throw yes, that out there. So that, yeah. so that drops uh, with my YouTube channel and everything else I do. You there can you also go. find me. I am a co-host on the Nerds Around. You can catch us every Tuesday live uh, on YouTube and Twitch as well. And then we have uh, podcast episodes coming out every other Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I think we are on a bi-weekly schedule now. You can also find me on the Inbeyond Medusa's Cascade podcast. I am one of the players of uh, that campaign that is coming out. And yeah, 
so you can find it if you guys listen to D and you guys love uh a bunch of friends kind of just be utter chaos with each other you can find me at the medusa's cascade podcast as well um i think that's everything you can find me at i'm sure you can find me somewhere else because i'm me but this guy ooh. is too damn busy I'm trying. I'm trying. I finally got my schedule to where I could gave myself a personal day. I gave yes. my I gave myself a self care law day. They self care law day. Okay. All right. <laughs> well. Well. Excellent. All right. So quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, there you see. There you go. Can't be law less. Only law more. <laughs> That's how we got to end it right there. Okay, uh, we'll be we'll be back in uh, in two shakes of a lamb's tail. La, thank you so much for for joining us tonight, and I cannot wait me. for the second hour. It's gonna be awesome. Same here. Awesome, awesome. All right, we'll be right back. Mm-hmm.